So we all know that there is a conflict going on in Gaza. There is a war going on in the Ukraine with Russia, but not enough people. And certainly the American media is not talking about what is going on in the Congo. So we have got to continue to have the conversation because mainstream media doesn't want to talk about it. They talk about the wars and the conflicts impacting um, the lighter people, but when it comes to the melanated people and how they are being impacted, they we're, we're mum. Our media uh, keeps its mouth shut. Now, what is going on in the Congo is the result of what many of these wars are about, and what many of the why many of these countries are unstable is because we want their resources. And that is definitely true of what is going on in the Congo. But there are creators on TikTok that are showing and sharing what is going on. So I'm going to show a montage of their videos. Please go ahead. I'm going to connect the, the TikTok people in the comments so you guys can go follow them because they are more um, versed on it. I just wanted to bring them to you and then you guys can explore a little bit more because we know that our government, our leadership, the companies that help fund these um, wars are not going to speak on this. And like um, one of my um, TikTok mutuals was saying, many of these companies are inflating these prices of these products to help continue to fund these wars. So that's just something else to think about as we move into the holiday season. Your money could just be uh, that little extra, not even a little bit extra, so much more money that we're spending. There's a reason for it. All right, y'all watch these videos. Since 1996, over 6 million people have died in the Democratic Republic of the Congo so that we in the Western world can benefit from its resources. Congo is extremely rich in gold, diamonds, copper, cobalt, tin, uranium, coltan, and many other precious minerals. Congo has 64% of the Earth's coltan, a precious mineral that is needed for our modern electronics like iPhones, iPads, computers, laptops, PlayStations, Xboxes, Nintendos, jet engines, inkjet printers, and the list goes on and on. In 1946, the Strategic Minerals Stockpiling Act was passed to obtain and stockpile cobalt. With the largest reserves of cobalt on the planet, Congo was targeted. Cobalt is a strategic and critical mineral that is essential for our aerospace, military, and defense industries. As the United States and the United Kingdom provide financial aid and military aid to countries such as Rwanda and Uganda, these neighboring countries plunder Congo's natural resources as the death toll rises. In four studies, the United Nations implicated multinational companies in sourcing coltan from Congo, stating that these companies serve as the engine of the conflict in the DRC. As the world benefits from Congo's riches, Congolese men, women, and children continue to be raped, tortured, starved, displaced, and killed. In 2010, a leaked United Nations report cited crimes of genocide may have been committed by the Rwandan troops. There is very little media coverage on what is actually happening in Congo. When Congo is covered by the media, it is often about rebel groups committing mass atrocities. What these reports do not cover are the funding, training, and the arming of these rebel groups by foreign governments. Nothing is ever mentioned about the Western-backed coups, wars, assassinations, or the involvement of foreign corporations in the looting of Congo. 48 women are raped every hour. Millions are displaced. Over 6 million dead. Half are children under the age of 5. What is happening in Congo is a silent holocaust. Please stop scrolling. If you care about Congo and you want to learn more, please watch this video. Congo is bleeding and we are finally hearing about it. But what we also need to understand 
is why it is bleeding. What has led us to where we are right now? And who is involved? My name is Annabelle, I'm an educator, and I'm here to do just that. So listen in to this series. By now, we would have heard of the atrocities happening with over 2.1 million people enslaved and working in slave-like conditions every day, over a majority of which are children. But we really need to understand is that one of the reasons this is happening is due to the protracted war economy that the DRC is in the heart of. The DRC is in the Great Lakes region. It stands in the centre of instability, which is described as a transnational war economy. It's a situation where wealth-seeking government officials can collaborate with rebel leaders and international Western businesses to perpetrate the illicit trading and selling and accumulation of raw material. We need to understand that all three of these parties all have an interest in the DRC. They stand to gain something by preserving the war economy that exploits Congo and its people. So these ungoverned spaces are naturally endowed with raw minerals and the warlords who have rose to power during the Congolese civil war and the remnants of the Rwandan genocide have unfettered access to these raw minerals, namely coltan, cobalt, uranium. They mine the minerals and trade it in the legitimate commodity market, which is booming due to the Western green economy. Because all of our businesses are trying to transition into green, they are looking for these resources. Whoever has access to these resources has power. So struggle for control in the coltan mines has been central in the conflict of Eastern Congo, which claimed over 4 million lives in the past decade. So, to put it simply, the people of Congo are dying, are being exploited due to the natural resources that their homeland has. This is due to this idea of a war economy in which access and control over these raw minerals funds the Western economy, allows government officials to tax miners and companies for access, giving them wealth, and allows warlords to have control and trade it on a legitimate market. All of this bleeds Congo dry. I'm gonna try to get through this without crying. Not only was I born and raised in the Democratic Republic of Congo, I am also a refugee. The Congolese people are no stranger to war. In fact, many people can't even pinpoint if the war ever ended or when it truly started. What we do know is what it's about and what it has done to our beautiful Congo. Congo is one of the world's largest producers of cobalt, which is used for batteries and all of your electric cars. We are also one of the world's largest producers of coltan, which is used for your phone. Right now in the DRC, women, children, men, people are being forced into slavery in order to continue to produce these resources so the world can keep spinning while our people continue to suffer. These rebel groups are being funded by America, France, Britain, Israel. In 2016, I was doing pageants. I was straight out of college advocating for this, fighting for this. And all of those years ago, it consumed me. All I could do was try to fight for my country, it was do all I can in my power to fight for my country. And it feels like it was useless. It feels like nothing has changed. And those were years ago. Fast forward to 2023 and women are still being raped. Kids are People are still being killed in ways that we cannot even say, we cannot even express without losing our minds because it is inhumane what is happening to people in Congo. It feels like no matter what we do, it just never ends. No matter how often we participate in fundraisers, we join support groups to end conflict, we raise awareness. It does not feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys i think i just kind of gave up i feel like i had to give up like i have to live my life without feeling like i'm in this constant just slum of what is this world and sometimes it takes a lot for us to come on here and try to raise awareness when something is this close to home when something hits this close to home 
Here is a few things you can do. You can support diplomatic efforts to end the conflict. Of course, you can always donate as well. And if you're comfortable and if you can emotionally handle it, you can learn more and raise awareness. It's almost like the people of Congo never stood a chance. We never stood a chance. The sooner we accept that political stability in Africa is bad business for organizations like UNHCR and UNICEF, the better. These organizations were literally closing down their offices in Southern Africa. Boom, the people of DRC start dying. The same Congolese who exposed the UN for stealing minerals and hoarding it in their offices. The same UN that was exposed by the Congolese people for causing instability in some parts of Congo are now dying. When we are killing each other and dying, they are going around the world begging for billions of dollars because we are dying. It's good business for them. As long as there's people donating to organizations like UNICEF and UNHCR, we will always die as Africans. When we stop fighting, they don't make money. What assurity do we have that these organizations actually are not funding wars in Africa? But what assurity do we have that UNICEF, the injections they are giving to our children are actually safe? The same organizations that say that we are overpopulated as Africans. Africans, these organizations are not here for our own good.